Okay, so let's take a look here at Thirty Years' War. This is Europe in Agony, 1618-1648. I just got this uh, off of eBay. How about, well, it just arrived a couple days ago and uh, ordered it last week. Um, it's not too tough to find uh, at a decent price. This one was particularly appealing because uh, it was free shipping, so uh, there were a couple of bids on it, but uh, got it for about 58 bucks, um, which is you know, pretty pretty typical, at least for an unpunched copy. Um, you look for a punched and or clipped copy, you can probably find it cheaper. Um, but uh, it, it's widely available, although it's fairly old. Um, 2001, I believe, is the copyright. Yep. Um, this one had some issues uh, pointed out when it was first released. Um, one of the larger complaints is that the deck is fairly small for a CDG. Um, usually you want uh, a little bit of a larger deck. More cards equals more options. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about a CDG, uh, a lot of the historical content and thematic flavor is in the cards. Uh, so fewer cards leaves a little less in the way of historical or thematic content. So um, regardless, you know, there's not a ton of games out there on the Thirty Years' War. Um, there are some... combat related games, more tactical games, um, which is in here in the uh, Musket and Pike series, um, which you can see that's the five games there, starting with uh, Sweden Fights On, all the way through Saints and Armor, and then you've got a more recent title, One by the Sword, which is another CDG take on the Thirty Years War. It is not, however, um, a like full campaign of the entire Thirty Years' War. It's basically different scenarios of the Thirty Years' War at an operational level. So um, well, still, that's still a little different than uh, the CDG here. Um, i trying to think of stuff other than from GMT uh, that covers the Thirty Years' War besides Musket and Pike or one by the sword. I guess you've got uh, the the decision games. I can't remember if they're folio games of maybe it was a quad game on the Thirty Years War from Decision Games. So uh any old SPI titles? Yeah. I think the I think the the decision games quad was based off the old SPI title. But I think those are tactical games. I'm not sure if there's another CDG that covers the Thirty Years War. You know, it does make you wonder if, um, let's see, Virgin Queen, and here I stand there, um, if if that system um, from Ed Beach will ever, would ever possibly be adapted to the Thirty Years War. Um, not something that, that people would look at that would sell a lot of titles. You know, if you're, if you're talking about a publisher, uh, thinking, you know, Thirty Years' War, yeah, this is not a a winning proposition for a published title. Um, but, you know, I think given that here I stand, you know, Wars of the Reformation, you know, is that going to be a giant selling topic? You know, logic would say no, uh, for, you know, just looking at the war game hobby and the, the dominance of World War II or the Civil War. Or Napoleonics, um, and yet, you know, here it is a a beloved series um, played by even non war gamers. I've got you know non war gamers in my uh, regular gaming group that have played Here I Stand and greatly enjoyed it. So, um, you know, there is an audience for topics, uh, even if the the uh, publisher may think the topic doesn't work, there's an audience if the game is, is well designed. 
Um, this may very well not be that game, <laughs> based on the the reviews that I've seen of it. Um, but I did. I got an unpunched copy, so I thought I'd do a little unboxing. I uh, haven't uh, done too many unboxing videos. I did a lot more of them earlier in my collecting days, mainly because I, that was when I was getting most of my games. My my purchasing has slowed down a bit um, since my my prime acquisition period. I've got most of the titles, the out of print titles that I was looking for. This was one that I had uh, always kind of dithered on for a long time. Mostly because it's it's out there. It's not something that, oh, if you see it, you have to jump at it. Uh, there's always going to be copies of this floating around. Um, not particularly expensive. So, uh, regardless, I thought I'd do an unboxing because it's another chance to look at some vintage uh, Roger McGowan cover art. And th this is kind of interesting for a McGowan cover. Um for this era, which is early, the early aughts for McGowan, which he did a lot of what I've referred to in the past as the clip art period, where he would he, he takes artwork from other sources and kind of cuts it out and pieces it together. Um, and certainly did this here, because, you know, it's, it's almost difficult to even tell um, what... Uh, what's one image and you know what is added in you know clearly this stuff here is added in but you've got this image of the the city here you know with it's on fire or under attack or whatever but are these units here you know the horsemen here and these these troops are they were these part of this image or were they added in you know clearly these guys were added in um clearly this was added in but it's kind of hard to tell and so you know, compared to the the covers on the uh, the Musket Pike games, which are very clearly, you know, kind of collages that are assembled, this is a little different um, in that it's it's a collage, but it's dominated by a single image, um, which is more of the modern Roger McGowan style, which is to take a single period image, and uh, and a title, and leave it at that. Um, think. Uh, Saints in Armor, which is the latest Musket and Pike title, you know, single representative image on the front, one by the sword, same thing. Um, what are some of the more recent titles? Maybe Serpents of the Seas, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, Flying Colors, Blue Cross, White Ensign, the, the latest Flying Colors games. Uh, most of this of his stuff that he does nowadays, um, as opposed to, you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, is a single representative image uh, for the game. So. This is kind of like that, but not quite. <laughs> still a little of the, still a little of the collage style in there, um, and then the uh, the game design, you know, kind of plate here gets it calls out the designer. Um, you don't see that too often, except for the the Richard Bird titles that GMT still does, where they'll call out his name pretty prominently. Um, where's the box? Really typical for GMT. Um, even today, their sort of info panel here um, is is pretty pretty standard. Where they have some counter samples for a CDG, they'll have some card samples, and then your you know difficulty scale and contents and stuff. So, and then a little information up here with a map. Basically, that's the full game map right there, and some text on the game. So. But open. Yeah, this is early um, GMT before they started doing what I call the titanium boxes or the very heavy, heavy cardboard boxes uh, that you see, particularly for their their three inch boxes, their larger boxes. Um, although some of their their regular two inch boxes also. Uh, have the the heavier um, quality cardboard. Usually they do that for reprints on the touch boxes. So got a couple of uh, shrink wrapped decks of cards here. These look like pretty standard um, GMT cards, even a standard uh, GMT CDG format. If you look at here, I stand or Virgin Queen, Wilderness War, or what for the people. Um, I'm trying to think of the other CDGs out there. Uh, 
they all look, the cards all look like that. Broken into two different decks here, it appears. So one is probably the Protestants, one's probably the Catholics, although they both have the same picture. It's different colored borders. But again, baggies. Fairly flimsy cardstock player aid here. Um, is this the looks like setup? Maybe. Yep. Deck setup chart. And then I think more setup chart per scenario here. So that's the setup chart again. Not flimsy. Um, the map, I'll unfold that in a minute. Here is your sequence of play. So this looks like the, the sort of standard play aid here. Probably national effects table, loot table, pillage effects. Interesting. Alright, so again, the play aid's both kind of flimsy, um, not out of the ordinary for GMT uh, from this particular era. Interestingly, only a single rule book, there's no playbook. Um, if you look in the rule book here, and again, this is pretty thin, um, all in black and white. Most of uh, GMT's CDGs these days are in have full color. Just looking here to see if there are any historical notes. Maybe there might be some historical notes in the scenarios. Page 26. Maybe not. I guess the closest thing you'll get to your historical notes is probably in the card manifests. Um, anyway, total rules. Oh, it's interesting. The last page isn't numbered, but it's 31. So you're looking at 32 pages of rules. Some of this last page here is bibliography and card manifest stuff. So um, again, that's about typical for CDGs these days. I think Virgin Queen is about 30 pages of rules as well. Um, you know, and again, classic Roger McGowan flip art throughout. Uh, but yeah, much much thinner paper compared to what you get uh, from GMT these days. They've got uh, a little more budget, I think, these days for for their games. Um, especially their, their higher selling titles um, that have been through multiple printings. And here are some counter sheets. Counter sheet one, and these look like uh, half inch counters. So, pretty typical GMT counters. The die cutting all looks pretty good on these. Yep, no, no bleeding over or floating or anything. Up oh, and the second counter sheet has the smaller counters, so I suspect like leaders and things, they're they're the smaller counters, so you can set them on top of the the troops. And again, that's all pretty typical for um, CDGs anymore, is to have your multiple size counters. So quality counters from GMT, but interesting. Um, you know, not a lot of components. Again, this was pretty typical for GMT at the time. They did not include lots of extra stuff um, in the boxes back in this era. Single rule book, single setup chart, single player aid. Um, nowadays, you'd have multiples of all those things. Um, we'll unfold the map and take a look at it. CDGs, um, they do well these days. Uh, we'll have usually a mounted map option. Um, GMT will P500 um, a mounted map, and if enough people P500 it, they will make it. Um, notable CDGs that did that are Here I Stand, um, originally released with a paper map. Once it hit it big, GMT did a mounted map, and then eventually a, a, in the reprinting, Included the mounted map as a matter of course. Virgin Queen, never even a question. That shipped originally with a mounted map. Um, 
Unhappy King Charles, though, that, that has recently added a mounted map. Wilderness War, another example of a game that originally had a paper map and later printings had the mounted map. Um, any other ones here that have added a mounted map after the fact? Uh, Unconditional Surrender, there from World War II, that's one that added the mounted map. Empire of the Sun, same way, that was one of the CDGs that added a mounted map. For the People, I think the same way, I think originally when that shipped, first printing had a paper map. So, you know, Paths of Glory, um, which I don't have, but uh, another CDG that, that added a, a mounted map later after the first printing. Um, so, so it's, it's a typical practice uh, for GMT. So here we go, typical CDG map, point to point, uh, all, the, all the bubbles, as it were. Um, this one not as bad as some others, uh, you think notably like the Clash of Monarchs map. Part of that's because Mark Mahaffey designed that, so it's not only is it just bubbles out the yin-yang, but it's uh, also a, a muddled, sort of kind of muddy looking monochromatic mess. Um, this map Certainly not a monochromatic muddy mess, very clear. Uh, all the, the, the different colored points are clear, the underlying terrain fairly clear, and all the connecting lines fairly clear. Looks like you've got your key over there. And various map information, turn tracks, and so forth, and some charts. But yeah, back in the days when they had some charts on the maps, kind of miss that. I like. Yep, there's your combat results table. Better be on the map, because I didn't see it on the player aid. So, uh, you, know, you definitely wouldn't see that these days. Nowadays, the map has... Maps have almost no charts on them. It's all offloaded onto cards. So, uh, definitely not... Definitely not the case here. You've got charts on the map, which I like. So, I will look forward to giving this one a try. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, given that um, we've got 1914 laid out here. And then elsewhere, you've got None But Heroes over there. Currently playing Germantown from Battles of the American Revolution there. And then back here, that is... Get a shot of it. Napoleon against Europe from Hexasim. So the tables are full uh, these days. So once I finish w at least one of those games, um, we might give Thirty Years War here a try. Um, the, the 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 era is kind of nagging at me um, to either try this or One by the Sword or bust out some musket and pike to play. Um, I've, just, I've been kind of thinking a little bit about this particular era, so um, I look forward to getting to it soon.